Hello, this is a tutorial video on how to get started with Autodesk Inventor uh, Professional 2012. We're going to walk through uh, getting started and um, creating some basic uh, cube shapes and learning the interface and uh, saving and creating an assembly. So um, let's begin. Uh, to launch uh, Autodesk Inventor Professional 2012, you want to look for the the icon with the golden eye, uh, it says I Pro on it. You want to make sure you get this one and not one of the other uh, many icons you might have on your desktop. And when you launch this the first time, it might give you a, a dialog box saying that it needs to um, register. Um, so it might take a moment to launch for the first time you launch it in your account on your computer. And it might also ask you later after it's launched if you can you know, log in and give it your email address. And I think it'll give you an, option to say no thanks and you can do that. I've already launched it so I'm going to come right up here and this is the uh, screen we get and we want to create a, uh, a new part file so I'm going to go over here in the upper left hand corner where it says new click and um, it might go over here to default we want to maybe use English and there's a couple, lots of different files here the ones we're going to want to focus on we're going to focus on standard IPT as an in inventor part, standard inches part, and if you look at the metric you'll say um, here's standard in millimeters, so just you know you just want to watch for that and you want to make sure you say you're we're doing this in inches. Um, and I can click OK or double click on that. And now my part file opens and we're in we're in a 2D mode right now, what we call um, sketch mode and what, we're, what, what it's asking us to do is to uh, draw the profile of the part we want to make and so in this case it's fairly simple I'm going to go over here to our tool palette we have a number of tools, a line tool, circle tool, rectangle tool you don't have to go up here to use these we can just right click um, on, on the window view if I right click here I can get most of the tools I need to use on a regular basis right here on a nice contextual menu. So I'm going to make a two-point rectangle and it's a really good idea. <clears throat> if you notice we're, we're working in a, uh, a coordinate system. I've got an XY coordinate system. And it's a really good idea to start your parts and things you're going to be making in uh, right on the origin. And It's also a good idea then to bring your parts up into the upper right hand quadrant so your 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 values are all uh, plus and it just makes it easier to do the math later on when you have to do things otherwise you're gonna have to be working with negative numbers and stuff like that and it might take a little moment to adjust to that um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna click and let go and drag okay I'm not I'm not clicking and dragging I clicked my mouse and I released the mouse and I've let go and now I'm dragging up to the right hand corner and you can see I've got dimensions for how tall my square is and how how wide it is, and there it's in blue. One of them is in blue, and I can type now with my keyboard the the, the desired dimension. I could go. I want to make a one-inch cube, so I, I need to first start with a one-inch square, and I could drag this out and try to get to one inch. But it's much easier if I just type in one, and if I press the tab key, and I can type in one again, and tab. And you notice I can, um, I have those locked in. Now you can see the little lock saying, hey, I've constrained that in there. I can't change them. I could, if I wanted to now, go to another quadrant. Okay, and now to set this and be done with this shape, I'm going to click again. It's locked in at one by one, and it gives me the dimensions here, um, a one by one square. Uh, to tell it we're done, I can click on Finish Sketch up here in the menu, or I can right-click and click Finish 2D Sketch. And this is where we're going to enter the realm of 3D, right here. So now we're looking at it on an angle, and we're, we're getting our uh, 3D shape here. And we've got our uh, cube. I can grab a hold of the cube and move this around so you can see how it's, it's pivoting around and doing this. And if I get myself off track, it might be hard to get back myself back in there, and I can just click on the Home button to, to bring me back home. Now I want to take my shape and <clears throat> take go from a two-dimensional square into a 3D cube and all I need to do is right click and extrude so we're going to add a third dimension to this and because the dimensions were one inch it's assuming I want to do one inch and so it's already gone right to there but let's say for example you know for sake of argument I wanted to do a two inch okay it's going to go out 
or um, half an inch, I type in 0.5. Okay, so I can I can type in any dimensions that I wanted to I want to here, and I can change that. But we're going to stick with one, and I click uh, I can click the checkbox. I either click OK here, or I can click the little green checkbox here, and now I've got my little cube. I'm going to click on my home button again to center my view, and I can roll this cube around. Okay, and at this point, it might be a good idea to go ahead and go to um, the little save button and save and if I've not saved this before it's going to ask me to save it so I'm going to call this you know um, a, a demo you know we'll call it cube cube and I'm going to give it a color gray save and now I, I want to make a I want to make a couple of copies of this and with different colors we can change the color if I go up here to material as material if I click on as material I'm going to get a big list of different things we could do. There's colors, but, but there's also things that, that qualify as what we would say is material. So there's masonry, concrete, um, and because this is such a small, we're seeing bitmap graphics on there and they look a little funky, but um, you don't have to worry, worry about that. If you like it, you can do that. We can go to rusted metal, we can do, um, there's, there's glass, there's, we have, we, have, do we have brushed metal in here. I wonder, can I search? Um, so there's there's all kinds of stuff here that we can do honed. So that's you know there's different textures. It'll also give it. We you want to keep, kind of keep it uh, simple, so we can do that. So let's let's just go with the green. Now, um, I I want to keep that gray cube. If I hit save right now, this is called gray cube. I want to make this the green cube. So it's, I want to do a save as. So I've got to go under the I Pro menu and do a save as. To create a new copy. The difference between save and save as, save as creates the new copy. So now this is a cube green. I'm going to save it and I'm going to change the color. I'm going to get a different color here. Let's get uh, orange. Let's just do the orange. And I'm again I want to do a new copy. I'm going to save as. And I've just created a simple geometric shape, and I've created, saved it three times in three different colors. Uh, and these are now three different parts. I can close this now if I want to, or we can just minimize it. And now I want to make what we call an assembly. An assembly is what we use. It's a kind of file where we're, we're going to bring multiple parts in together to make one object, one working model. And I don't know if you notice here, this is one cube as a standard part, but notice how the assembly, the IAM, the Inventor Assembly uh, files, they have multiple cubes on it. Okay, so, it's, so this is one part, one th 3D model of one individual piece. This is going to be the combination of multiple parts. So I'm going to click on that. I can double click on it. And I've basically now I have got my um, assembly. Well, there's nothing in here. I have to put parts in here. In order to put parts in, I'm going to right click on this empty space here and place a component. And I'm looking for those cubes I just made. So here's my green cube, here's my gray cube, and here's my orange cube. We'll, we'll put an orange cube in. You might get a dialog box. Let's go ahead and click yes. And it's placing one, but notice how I, if I zoom out here a little bit, I can drop another one in here and another one in there. And it will keep going. In order to be able to stop placing parts, I need to right click. Without clicking uh, the left click, I want to right click and click on done. However, multiple blocks going in together is going to get confusing. So don't put in more than one at a time. I'm going to go over here to my browser over here on the left, click on one of these cubes, and delete. And now I'm down to two cubes. Right click, delete. Notice how this first cube, if you look at the icon, it's got a little tack in it. That means it's grounded, which means I can't, I can't pick it up and move it. And if I go to try to move it, my icon changes to that little tack saying, hey, this one's stuck in place. The first object you place in an assembly file will be grounded and you won't allow you to move it around. Uh, we can change that, but it's a good idea to have something grounded um, 
when making an assembly, otherwise things might get a little unwieldy. Okay, so we always want to have something grounded. If you want to change it later, we can change it later, but you're going to want to change it to have something else remain grounded. I'm going to bring in another part now, a different color. Right click, place component. Here's my green. I'm going to open. And I'm going to drop it. Right click, done. Now I want to put these together, and if I just drag this guy, I can pick it up and move it because he's not grounded. If I try to move him right, and I want to stick it right on the, hmm, I want to put it right on there. But it, it, I can't set it down anywhere and have it stick. So what we want to do is we want to attach it, and we're going to use tools called constraining tools, or constrain. We want to constrain this green box to the orange one, and we're going to do it in three dimensions to prevent it from moving so it'll be permanently attached in the computer here. Okay, and so there's a couple of different constraints. So first I'm going to right click and here's the constraint tool and there's, there's different constraints we can work with here. There's what we call mate constraint which means I can take one surface and connect it to another face, another surface here. Okay, uh, and then there's what we call flush. Flush would make things even. So I'm going to work with the flush constraint first. I'm going to make this side and this side flush with each other. So all I need to do is click and click. And you can see it bounced in. And I have to hit apply, otherwise it's going to back out. And I'm going to stay in this flush tool. And I'm going to make the top flush. And you can see how it's moving around now. So now I want you to see what happens when I, when I do this. I've got two constraints. I've constrained it. Uh, to the top to the top and side to side and now when I go to move this green one I really I can't move it except for linearly in this direction it won't let me move anywhere else I can move it in one direction now and this is where we're going to do one final constraint this is this this final constraint needs to be mate I want to attach this surface to the opposite face Okay, in order to do that, I need to click on my cube and rotate around so I can click on this face right there. And you saw it jump in. I click apply, and then I can cancel out of this tool. Now when I go to move my cube around, it's attached. I can't move it anymore. It's going to take at least three constraints to do this. Every time we want to attach one part to another part, you're going to have to do three constraints. Okay, for a one constraint for each dimension that we're working in. We're working in three dimensions. We have to have three constraints. Typically, it's flush, flush, mate, or you can do, sometimes you can do other variations. And there'll be other types of constraints we'll be working with later. But um, that's what you want to work with. Um, now, I'm going to bring in one final part. I'm going to bring in my gray. I'm going to open. Flush it to the bottom. And here's my little assembly. And I can rotate around. Now, as you continue to do this, I want you to do maybe five or six more, not five or six, but I have five or six total parts put in there of different colors. And you can make a little uh, geometric shape. And make sure you save your assemblies as you go. And again, I, what I want you to do is to make sure that you uh, just do one at a time because if you drop, uh, drop a whole bunch of uh, parts in there at the same time, it's going to start to get confusing and it will be difficult for you to manage what, what you're constraining where.